Next up, we're going to have Jung Ho Lee. Jung is the president of uh, Standard Graphene, which is the global leader in the graphene industry. Um, graphene, which is 200 times stronger than steel and 100 times more conductive than copper, is considered to be the miracle material that is going to take human race to the ne next level, just like electricity or the internet did. So please join me in welcoming Jung to the stage. As a child, I was always curious about where we come from and where we're headed. I remember poring over encyclopedias to learn where on the planet my country was located, where in the solar system the Earth was situated, where in the universe our solar system existed. The year was 1988. While traveling in the U.S., I visited the Smithsonian Institute's National Air and Space Museum in D.C. On a screen much larger than this one, I was able to see the Earth in our solar system. Unlike their descriptions in the encyclopedia, I was shocked to discover how small the Earth and solar system were and how vast the universe really was. Compared to the expanse of space, the solar system was but the size of a ping pong the earth a mere grain of sand. As I pursued my higher education in the U.S., I enjoyed discussions with friends about what changes the future would bring. It was then I first came across the term nano. I was certain that nano would lead the future of technology. I realized the world was a grain of sand at the Smithsonian, but it was the term nano that showed me the world. A world greater than the stretches of space lies inside a particle smaller than a speck of dust. During Korea's Shila dynasty, there lived a Buddhist monk by the name of Uisang. Uisang wrote the Popsongge, known in the English-speaking world as the Song of Dharma Nature. This song embodies the essence of Buddhism. One is the many, many is the one. A speck of dust swallows the universe. According to Uizang, the past, present, and future of the universe lies in a single speck of dust. So whenever I ponder about the universe in the nano world, Uizang's song always comes to mind. In 1996, I founded a research company that focused not on nano gold or silver, but one that focused on nano carbon, a significant event that led me here today. Now let's begin the story about a substance that holds the entire universe and contains the history of my life from childhood to today. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Zhang Wen Li. I am the uh, CEO of Standard Graphene. Uh, as Andrea talked about the age and the materials, and uh, I'm sorry. I need to go all the way back here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, I also need to talk uh, about our eras. And uh, our human race uh, evolved with the materials, as we all know. We started with Stone Age and uh, Bronze Age and then uh, Iron Age. And now we are with Oil and Plastic Age. And we need to ask ourselves, you know, what will take us to a uh, next era. What, what material will take us to the next era? And it's not me saying that, but a lot of academia are saying graphene. Why graphene? And let me tell you a little bit about graphene. So graphene is uh, two-dimensional, uh, one atomic nano single layer of graphite. And graphite, as we all know, it's pencilate. And uh, this material was very first uh, isolated by uh, two scientists from uh, Manchester University in year 2004. And these two scientists received Nobel Prize six years later, year 2010. And just, you know, why Nobel? It, you know, foundation gives those two, two scientists Nobel Prize because they think it's very important to find this material. And why? 
uh, these two sci scientists uh, figure out a very uh, distinctive characteristics. You know, let me introduce you to those characteristics. So graphene has strongest, uh, basically the strongest material we humankind ever found, and also has a very high electrical conductivity and also thermal conductivity. And it's flexible, and it's also very transparent. And lastly, graphene, with three grams of graphene, we can cover entire football fields. So it has very high surface areas. And what can you do with this material? And that's very important, right? We will be able to take this material out of the lab and take it to our daily life. And uh, what I'm going to introduce you right now is uh, data from the lab. So we are here to solve energy issues, well, climate issues, and uh, a lot of uh, you know, issues out there, poverty and water issues, and et cetera. So graphene can uh, do or have, so have answers to those issues. And firstly, if you add graphene, because it's so strong and so light, we can make a very light products. So we can have a very light drones, we can have a very light airplanes, uh, automobiles, and because of that, we can lose CO2 emission level. And if we add graphene uh, properly to solar panel, then solar panel's efficiency goes up to over 90%. Then we don't have to worry about building power plants. So our buildings can be solar panel, and uh, the building itself will generate electricity, power. So we don't have to worry about energy. And also, crapping batteries, you know, people talk about batteries all the time. You know, battery has a lot of issues. And uh, with graphene, you can have a very strong charged battery. You can have a very powerful battery and battery that can last very long. And what, you know, how great is it, right? So we'll take it to bio area as well. And uh, for example, you know, you guys all probably experienced at a, a hospital that, you know, there is a patch, bio patch, you can put it on your uh, skin. And bio patch basically uh, reads our uh, electrons from our body and uh, take it into data. And uh, it's important that uh, we get the very, uh, you know, strong signals from our body. So if we add graphene into that uh, bio patch electrode, then we can lower the resistance of the electron, and which means we can get better body signals. Just imagine what we can do with our uh, bio, you know, industries. So these are the data from the lab. But what good is it if we don't take this material out to the world, right? So that's where my role comes in. So year 1996. I decided to establish a nano carbon nanotechnology research center. And year 2009, this year is very uh, important year for our company. Uh, we decided to build a factory or a plant that can produce this material. This was the very first uh, plant that's ever built in the world. And it's been nine years. We've been working very hard to produce this material at large quantity and uh, produce this material at great quality and be able to meet the market price. So if we all know that, you know, unless we have a product that can be mass produced and have a great quality that, you know, market can uh, meet, market's desire can be met, and also if price is not comparative, then it's useless. So three pillars, we really work really hard to get to where we are right now. And the reason I'm standing here is because I think I have got to those three pillars needs. And uh, I'd like to uh, introduce some of our products which can really affect our lives. So UN has said 17 gold, we all know. And today I want to focus on number six, water. Why water? And I had a few experience uh, 10 years ago. So year 
2009, I had a chance to climb two mountains in Himalayas. One's Mount Makalu, uh, which I had my own team, expedition team, and my team went up to the summit. And I was lucky enough to get to the 6,000 meter high. And I'm not a professional climber. And I was drinking and uh, having fun with my friends day before I started climbing. <laughs> so you know, I'm, I'm as, as, as normal as you guys. You know. But it, uh, when I was climbing up, I saw a lot of water in Himalaya, as you know, you know, it's glacier water and, and water's available, abundant, ab abundant of waters out there. But you cannot drink those water. And uh, it's water's there, but you cannot drink it. And it's a, it's a serious problem. And right after climbing up uh, Mount Makalu, I came down and dear friend of mine who wanted to build a school in Mount Everest, so uh, I joined his foundation, and we went up to Mount Everest to build very first school from a Korean, uh, Korea side. And uh, we built uh, a school at a town called uh, Pangboche, which is about uh, 4,000 meter high up. And also, they needed water. And there was no solutions towards water issues. And then a year later, I was lucky enough to uh, meet with President Clinton, and I became a part of uh, CGIA. And then uh, there was uh, 19 members of, uh, of that uh, group, and we decided to go to Africa. And at that time, I you know, faced the reality and how the water and poverty issues really affect our lives. So I've always pondered you know, how I can solve these issues, water issues. What, if I can solve water issues, I can solve a very uh, big part of uh, human race's issues. So, and graphene, well, you know, this is data that you, you know, I just want to introduce. Over 300 million people drink polluted water, and every day 10,000 lives are vanished because of drinking polluted waters. So uh, with our graphene technology, I was be able to uh, introduce a water filter system which can uh, really you know, get rid of viruses and bacteria. Unless you can get rid of those two factors, uh, those two items, you cannot take a uh, water filter system. Because you know, places you, we want to take these items, there's no electricity, there's no in infrastructures. And if we have electricity or infrastructures, you can take uh, filters that can really work well. But you know, there are so many areas where you just cannot uh, have those kind of luxuries. And I wanted to develop a filter or a, or a, or a system which can be used without any infrastructures at all. And I want to demonstrate, you know, seeing is believing, so I want to demonstrate our filter. And I'm not trying to promote our product. I'm trying to, pro I'm trying to promote a, a material. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of companies which will work very hard to uh, produce uh, same quality product with graphene technology. So please. <laughs> And this is water. And I will put uh, some ink into a cup of water. Well, let's see what you know what it does. Pour some more water into it. And uh, the system has to have uh, quickness. If water doesn't come down uh, fast enough, and it's not as a, as a, as, uh, you know, uh, as market, uh, marketing, uh, you know, gimmick. It's, I mean, it's not as uh, beautiful as you know, think it is. And as you can see, it's very clean.
This is as clean as uh, Evian. <laughs> so water issue, we all you know, share the uh, same heart. And uh, I'm very proud of our company and our technology. And uh, this product will be coming out to the market and going to Cambodia, Vietnam, and Africa by end of this year. And before I finish my, uh, I have some more time, right? Two more minutes. Uh, so lightweight is also very important in our lives. So Maria is a young lady, and uh, she was be able to uh, hold a bicycle with her one hand. And uh, this bicycle originally is made out of carbon uh, fiber reinforced plastic, so which is already very, very uh, light product. And it's impossible to lose more than two or three percent weight loss with the product. But we are be able to show 16, uh, 16 percent of weight loss adding our graphene into this product. And before it was a 6.7 kilogram, now it's 5.5 kilogram. So we can change aerospace industry, we can change uh, automobile industry with this product. Uh, let me show you what graphene is, what graphene looks like before I finish my uh, presentation. It, just, it looks like a black powder. The key of this product is how to exfoliate, ex exfoliate from graphite into a one nano single layer. It's very, very light. Anyone wants to feel it? Come on. <laughs> very light, right? Okay. Well, thank you very much.